A playground shooting ends with one person in the hospital and police investigating. And what's being done to help stop veteran suicide? The congressional bill that might be the answer. Plus, another tasty food festival. We'll show you the idea behind Pizza Fest. It's Saturday, May 25th. Proudly covering all of Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania, this is Eyewitness News Weekends. Good morning and thanks for joining us on this Saturday. I'm Morgan Parrish. Brianna Strunk has the weekend off. We'll get to this morning's top news stories in just a minute, but first, let's get a check of the forecast with meteorologist Kevin Dirk. Kevin, happy Memorial Day weekend. I heard you're hosting all of the cookouts. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I were. <laughs> Me uh, too. Yeah, well, good morning, Morgan. We got kind of a so so weekend coming up. Not bad today, but uh, I think tomorrow might be a little bit messier. First, let's go take a look right now. Visibility's outside. If you're on the road, you don't have any problems. You're looking good. We'll take a quick look. Down there in the Lehigh Valley, Lehigh Area High School, sun is coming up nice and crystal clear. A quick look at our satellite radar. Just a few clouds out there, but there are some showers up there in the Great Lakes. That's not going to bother us, but there is a warm front that's going to slide through, and that could give us some showers late today and even maybe a couple of thunderstorms. Temperatures throughout the area 50 at Evoke Airport, 48 Mount Pocono, 53 in Allentown, 53 in Williamsport, 58 in Sealings Grove. So if you're heading out today, it's really not all that bad. We're going to be looking at a mix of sun and clouds. Temperatures coming up into the mid-70s, but we do have a chance of a late-day shower or thunderstorm, especially out there in the Susquehanna River Valley, Morgan. So we're going to be watching that line as it comes through. But otherwise, get out there and enjoy it. All right. We, ha we might have to move the cookout inside, right? That's okay. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Right. Well, Hazleton police are investigating a shooting at a playground basketball court. Officers arrived just before 6 o'clock last night at Alt Miller Playground on East 14th Street. Firefighters were called to clean up large amounts of blood on the basketball court. One person was taken to the hospital, no word yet on his name or condition. And another gun was also fired in the Poconos across the street from Stroudsburg High School. Officers responded around 2.30 Friday for a report of gunfire and found a large, uncooperative crowd with several people fighting. Authorities found a gun and took multiple people into custody. No one was injured as a result of the gunshot, but several suffered injuries in the fight. One woman is dead after a two-car crash in Schuylkill County. It happened Friday afternoon in Hubley Township on an intersection on Route 25. A car drifted into the oncoming lane and slammed head-on with another car. 76-year-old Larray Lucas of Hegan's was a passenger in the struck vehicle and died at the scene. Her driver, 67-year-old David Lucas of Hegan's, was seriously injured. So was the other driver, 75-year-old Lorelai Oswald, and her passenger, 43-year-old Jamie Oswald. The three survivors were hospitalized. A month of having the recyclables limited, Lackawanna County residents face new restrictions. The Lackawanna County Recycling Center is refusing to pick up brush that doesn't meet new standards. That policy took effect immediately with no warning to residents or the communities in which they live. Hedge and bu bush trimmings cannot be longer than 12 inches. Tree stumps, logs, and oversized brush will not be accepted. And leaves and grass are now considered brush, so you have to pay to have it recycled. Some residents believe the policy should be rethought. They need to have another plan somewhere because that is the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. If residents choose a different way to discard their brush, it could hurt municipalities with funding. Head to PAHomepage.com for a full review of Lackawanna County Recycling Center's policy. Memorial Day is dedicated to honoring those who gave their lives in military service. But what about military service members who take their own lives? A bill in Congress aims to help provide support to a VA suicide prevention coordinators who are finding themselves overwhelmed. Eyewitness News Washington, D.C. reporter Morgan Parrish, Morgan Wright, explains.
One veteran loss of suicide is one too many. New York Congressman Anthony Brindisi says veteran suicides continue at a crisis level. We're losing over 20 veterans a day. Brindisi says Congress must help America get a grip on the issue. And this week, Congress passed his bill designed to identify exactly what more the VA needs to help stop the senseless deaths. It takes a look at our suicide prevention coordinators who are really the front line of defense at the VA to assess veterans. Congressman Brindisi says he thinks the VA needs more resources to support suicide prevention coordinators who are overworked and can't manage their workloads. We have to make sure that we have enough of these uh, professionals in the field uh, who are in our VAs who can respond to the needs of our veterans. Sean Skelly, Commissioner of the National Commission on Military, National, and Public Service, says the VA must improve its outreach. 70% of veterans don't access the Veterans Department. Skelly says the military needs to change its culture surrounding asking for help. But even when you're a civilian, after you've gotten out, to admit that I need help. Congressman Brindisi says if the Senate will pass his bill, he believes the president will sign it. In Washington, Morgan Wright. The legislation would require the U.S. Controller General to conduct an assessment of the responsibilities, workload, and vacancy rates of the Department of Veterans Affairs suicide prevention coordinators. Veterans of what's known as the Forgotten War were thanked Friday in Lycoming County. Prince Senator Pat Toomey Army led the Korean Rose. Ambassador for Peace Medal ceremony in Williamsport. He and other government officials gave 70 Korean War veterans a peace medal and a handshake. The Korean War is called the Forgotten War because it took place between two prominent wars, World War II and the Vietnam War. Yesterday's ceremony let Korean War veterans know they are remembered and appreciated. The joy that they got in being recognized, even if it's 60 or 65 years later, is very important. The South Korean government sponsored the medals given to the veterans. Veterans were also honored near Wilkesbury yesterday. A Memorial Day ceremony was held at the VA Medical Center. The Pledge of Allegiance was recited and led by former prisoner of war Fred Searles. He also recited the POW Pledge of Allegiance. Congressman Matt Cartwright served as keynote speaker. The war dead that we honor on Memorial Day, the people who gave their full measure of devotion for our freedoms uh, all over the world in every conflict our nation has been in. The national anthem and a presentation of colors and taps are also part of Friday's ceremony. That's the sound of a Memorial Day choir rehearsal Friday in Wilkesbury. More than two dozen professional choir singers rehearsed at First Presbyterian Church for a remembrance this Memorial Day. That remembrance is the 115th annual Memorial Day pilgrimage to St. Tikon's Monastery in Weymart. It's America's oldest Orthodox monastery. Before that happens, the choir will perform this afternoon from 4 to 5 at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church on South Franklin Street in Wilkesbury. There's no shortage of food festivals across our area, but a business owner in Lackawanna County has come up with a new idea, and it involves a saucy NEPA staple. Reporter Kelly Cho is the first to dish out the details only on Eyewitness News. You know it's festival season when Jessup Host Company number two kicks off their annual carnival. And northeastern Pennsylvania has its fair share of warm weather events where the focus is on the food. Kielbasi, pierogies, tomatoes, well, you get the idea. But if you ask Giovanni Piccolino, he'll tell you there's something missing. Our area is, is obviously known for pizza shops, I think, and there's a ton of them, so why not a pizza fest? <laughs> Giovanni is the co owner of Bona Pizza on Lackawanna Avenue in Scranton. He posted his idea on Facebook, and in less than a week, he already had a meeting at Montage Mountain, a possible venue for the pizza fest. Giovanni says it's still in the early planning stages, but it could happen as early as July. 30 something pizza shops under one tent with a bunch of beer. Giovanni told me the festival could turn into a friendly competition between the vendors, especially with the variety of styles that NEPA has to offer. You know, the round, square, you know, Sicilian, there's thicker pizza, you know, there's all different ones. We have the best round. Giovanni says he's ready to stand by that statement, hoping more pizza makers will step up to the challenge this summer. 
pepperoni and sweet pepper. In Scranton, Kelly Choate, Eyewitness News. If your pizza shop wants to participate in the festival, you can send a message to the Bona Pizza Lackawanna Avenue Facebook page. Usually, when you think of a cat being rescued, you think of firefighters, but that wasn't the case Thursday night. Enter Wilkesbury Township officers Eric Godlewski and Brian Mock. They saved a kitten that got struck in a storm drain on Highland Park Boulevard. A driver heard the kitten's cries and contacted police. That driver adopted the kitten. Now that's a pet rescue. Coming up on Eyewitness News, a priest heads the prison. How a long-awaited trial lands an abuser nearly two decades behind bars. And the college admissions scandal continues. More please from Boston, Massachusetts. Okay, if you've got some outdoor plans today, it's not bad. We're going to be looking at a mix of sun and clouds. It's going to be mild, low humidity. Got to love that. But a warm front is making its way towards us, and we could see a scattered shower or even a thunderstorm, but that wouldn't be until later in the day. Now, for more news, let's send it back to Morgan. Thanks, Kevin. In news across the nation, a former priest accused of repeatedly assaulting two altar boys in the 80s heads to prison. 76-year-old Ronald Paquin was sentenced to 16 years on Friday. Paquin, who was defrocked in 2004, previously served more than 10 years in prison in Massachusetts for sexually abusing another altar boy. He was released in 2015. Two men testified in the main case that Paquin invited them on trips in the 1980s and repeatedly assaulted them. Paquin was only convicted on charges involving one of them. A federal judge has blocked President Trump from using Defense Department funds to construct parts of a wall on the U.S. southern border. The ruling was issued Friday night by a district judge in Northern California. The judge says Defense Department funds cannot be dispersed without congressional approval. 
The ruling would halt use of DOD money for specific border wall projects in Texas and Arizona. However, the Trump administration could still tap funds from other sources. Three more California parents have pleaded guilty in the college admissions cheating scheme. Marjorie Clapper, Jane Buckingham, and Robert Flaxman pleaded guilty in Boston on Friday to a charge of conspiracy to commit mail fraud and other charges. Authorities say the three paid between $15,000 and $75,000 each to have someone cheat on their children's ACT. Thirteen parents have pleaded guilty so far in the case. The parents include Desperate Housewives star Felicity Huffman. A part of the Florida skyline is taking on a new shape and has music lovers' hearts skipping a beat. This giant guitar towers 35 stories high. It's part of the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino expansion in Hollywood, Florida. While not yet complete, this behind-the-scenes tour gives you a look of what's to come. VIP pools, Bora Bora-style rooms, and a beach club. This musical mammoth won't be opening until October, but you can start booking rooms as early as July 24th. Now let's get a look outside with meteorologist Kevin Dirk. Okay, Morgan, we're going to take a look at the Susquehanna River. What a pretty shot that is, isn't it? A little bit of cloudiness, but the sun's coming up. Got a pretty nice day ahead of us. I'll break it all down for you. Coming up next. Now, your eyewitness weather forecast. Okay, it's hard to believe we're here at the Memorial Day weekend already. Wow, time has flown. Take a look over my shoulder. Dallas, Misericordia University. Beautiful blue skies. What a nice start to the day. And you know what? It's not going to be a bad day. We're going to be looking at, well, I think a fair amount of sunshine, just a few clouds out there. But we do have to watch later on because we do have a warm front that's going to be coming through. And uh, that might trigger a couple of showers later in the day. Let's go take a look at the temperatures right now throughout the area. 53 at Williamsport, 58 Sealings Grove, 50 up there at Evoke Airport, 48 Mount Pocono, 15 Hazleton, Allentown, you're currently at 53 degrees. Here's a shot that was taken 
by Mark McCoskey. This is over in Kingston, Stratus Cumulus Clouds. This was yesterday. What a nice shot that is. Mark, thank you so much for sending that picture in. All right, now let's go take a look at what the big picture is. We do have some showers. Look at that, some heavy thunderstorms up there in the Great Lakes. That's not going to be our problem, but you can see the kind of a bow right there. That's warm air coming in. This is all coming in from the south and west. That's a warm front that's coming in. If we pull back just a little bit, there's that high pressure that's going to give us a pretty nice day today, but it's going to move off the coast. And as it does, this is going to start to fill in, and you can see the Storm Prediction Center is calling for a chance of some severe weather, especially in central Pennsylvania, but it really stretches all the way into the Wyoming Valley. But that won't be until later today into tonight. So we're going to watch that for you. Let's go take a look now at our future cast. We've got a lot of these red streamers. That's warm air coming in. You don't see a lot of them on us right now. And it's not that warm right now, but we put the maps in motion. You can see here's some showers and thunderstorms are going to start to build as we get towards the end of the day. The heat is going to start to go up. Now, while, as we go through the night, you can still see some more showers and thunderstorms popping up. Then tomorrow, a cold front's going to come through, and that's going to give us another chance of some showers and some thunderstorms. But once that pushes through, take a look at this high pressure as it builds in for the holiday itself. It's looking very good for Monday. But then we start to see that warm front come through once again. We're going to see showers again on Tuesday, but then it's really going to start to heat up. The heat will be on from Tuesday through Friday as warmer air comes in. As far as rainfall totals go, this is what you could expect to see by the time we get to tomorrow morning. We'll just put that in motion there. And it's not going to be a heavy rainfall, but you could see a couple of inches up there. Well, a couple of inches, I'm sorry, 0.67 inches up there in Hazleton, maybe three quarters of an inch over there in Williamsport. Let's go take a look at what's going on for the rest of the week. Again, for tomorrow, we're going to be looking at a scatter shower thunderstorm throughout the day, 82 for a high. Monday, Memorial Day, looking great, 78. Now, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, the heat is back on. We do have a chance of scatter showers and thunderstorms on Tuesday, scatter showers Wednesday. Another chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms on Thursday, Morgan. So it's kind of an unsettled summery pattern this week. And then for Friday, we start to cool off just a little bit with a high of 76 degrees under partly sunny skies. Before that bad weather gets here, though, you can do the right thing by downloading the weather app on your cell phone. Interactive radar, severe weather alerts, and we could have used that just a couple of days ago. We had a real stretch of some nasty weather. We did. We go from one extreme to the other. I mean, last time I was with you, I think it was like freezing in December. <laughs> and now, now it's, it's going to start to heat up. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, oh, do I like the cold or the warm? I'd rather take the heat, though. You're, you're in good company. I'd rather take the cold, oh. but that's just me. Well, opposites. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Well, if you're looking for something to do this weekend, there are plenty of events going on in our area. You can celebrate National Scavenger Hunt Day by hitting the trails at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary in Kempton. Or use your eagle eye to spot a good bargain. Freeland is hosting an indoor community yard sale at St. Michael's Recreation Center. Plus, you can learn about the bears of the world. An educational program is taking place at Locust Lake State Park. For more information about these events and others, head to pahomepage.com. It's not Silicon Valley, but it may as well be. Coming up on Eyewitness News, how a Midwest city is keeping up with startup growth.
This is Eyewitness News Weekends. When you think of a home for startup companies, Silicon Valley might be the first place that comes to mind. But there's another name that's quickly establishing itself in the tech world, Chicago. NBC's Julia Borstein takes a look at why the nation's booming tech scene has started to settle in a Midwest destination. The Midwest startup scene is hot, and it has a name, Silicon Prairie. Chicago's the city at the center of its growth. Uptake is one example of a company thriving here, using artificial intelligence to analyze data and deliver predictive analytics. It mines billions of hours of data for 140 transportation, energy, and manufacturing companies, making 4 million predictions an hour. Its customers include the U.S. Army, Caterpillar, Berkshire Hathaway Energy, and Rolls Royce. CEO Brad Keywell has founded nine companies here. This is a spectacular place to grow companies in the technology space. Few as spectacular in terms of Chicago as Uptake. And the reason is that Uptake is about helping industrial companies be better. And we're in the center of American industry, the Midwest. We're right here in Chicago. In addition to Chicago's location in the midst of American industry, it has the advantage of access to an educated and diverse workforce with dozens of colleges in the area. Lanzatech is headquartered in Chicago's suburb, Skokie, Illinois. It transforms pollution into ethanol, which can be turned into chemicals and fuels such as jet fuel, partnering with Virgin Atlantic to reduce its carbon emissions. CEO Jennifer Holmgren says the Windy City has enabled her company's growth. The Chicago area has a lot of really great universities with synthetic biology and also engineering expertise. And in addition, I really think this is a, a town with an attitude to get things done, to build big, tough things. And so that combination is perfect for the big problem we're trying to solve. While Lanza Tech aims to license its technology to companies around the world, including steel mills in China and an Indian oil plant, the employees here in Chicago are working to turn dangerous emissions into valuable products, such as oils that can be used for medicine, food, or fuel, while also fueling the growth of Midwest startups. Julia Borston, CNBC Business News, Chicago. CNBC's Disruptor 50 list was unveiled this month, and for the first time, over half the companies are outside Silicon Valley. Two are located in the Windy City. A recap of the morning's headlines still ahead, plus last night's sports highlights. But first, here are last night's winning lottery numbers.
proudly covering all of Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is Eyewitness News Weekends. Good morning and thanks for joining us on this Saturday. It's about 6.30. I'm Morgan Parrish. Brianna Strunk has the weekend off. We'll get to this morning's top news stories in just a minute, but first, let's get a check of the forecast with meteorologist Kevin Dirk. Kevin, happy Memorial Day weekend. Well, thanks, Morgan. Happy Memorial Day weekend to you, too. Finally. And, you know, I think we have a, a fairly decent weekend coming up. Today's going to be pretty good, but we got to watch for the end of the day. First off, let's go take a look at Tunkhannock High School. You got a little bit of fog going for you up there. A little bit soupy. Well, yeah, you're going to have that. Some areas do have fog right now. Satellite radar shows we've got some heavier rain up there in the Great Lakes area. That's not going to bother us, but we do have a warm front coming through, and that could give us a little bit of a problem later on, but later, later on. 50 right now at Evoke Airport as well as Hazleton. 51 Pottsville, 48. Still a little chilly up there in the Poconos. 53 in Allentown, 58 over there in Sealings Grove. And that is a little cooler than it was this time yesterday, about 11 degrees cooler up at the airport, 15 degrees cooler down there in Allentown. So if you're heading out today, it's not going to be bad. A mix of sun and clouds, a late day shower or thunderstorm is possible, especially out there in the Susquehanna River Valley. Temperatures climbing into the mid 70s for today. But Morgan, tomorrow, the heat is back in here and it's going to get more humid. Well, I don't like the humidity, but the heat I'll take. Okay, well, you got it. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Hazleton police are investigating a shooting at a playground basketball court. Officers arrived just before 6 o'clock last night at Alt Miller Playground on East 14th Street. Firefighters were called to clean up large amounts of blood on the basketball court. One person was hospitalized. No word yet on his name or condition. Another gun was also fired in the Poconos across the street from Stroudsburg High School. Officers responded around 2.30 Friday for a report of gunfire and found a large, uncooperative crowd with several people fighting. Authorities found a gun and took multiple people into custody. No one was injured as a result of the gunshot, but several suffered injuries in the fight. One woman is dead after a two-car crash in Schuylkill County. It happened Friday afternoon in Hubley Township on an intersection on Route 25. A car drifted into the oncoming lane and slammed head-on with another car. 76-year-old Larray Lucas of Hegan's was a passenger in the struck vehicle and died at the scene. Her driver, 67-year-old David Lucas of Hegan's, was seriously injured. So was the other driver, 75-year-old Lorelai Oswald, and her passenger, 43-year-old Jamie Oswald. The three survivors were hospitalized. State police say a deadly crash in Shikshini resulted from a driver going through a stop sign. Troopers say the car broadsided another car on Route 11 and East Butler Street, killing 64-year-old Sarah Timms of Shikshini. The other driver, 36-year-old Chrissy Similuka of Hunlock Creek, and two girls ages 12 and 15 were injured. So far, no charges have been filed in the connection with the crash. A month after having their recyclables limited, Lackawanna County residents face new restrictions. The Lackawanna County Recycling Center is refusing to pick up brush that doesn't meet new standards. That policy took effect immediately, with no warning to residents or the communities in which they live. Hedge and bush trimmings cannot be longer than 12 inches. Tree stumps, logs, and oversized brush will not be accepted. And leaves and grass are now considered brush, so you have to pay to have it recycled. Some residents believe the policy should be rethought. They need to have another plan somewhere because that is the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. If residents choose a different way to discard their brush, it could hurt municipalities with funding. Head to PAHomepage.com for a full review of Lackawanna County Recycling Center's policy. Well, Memorial Day is dedicated to honoring those who gave their lives in military service, but what about military service members who take their own lives? A bill in Congress aims to help provide support to VA suicide prevention coordinators who are finding themselves overwhelmed. Eyewitness News Washington, D.C. reporter Morgan Wright explains. One veteran loss of suicide is one too many. New York Congressman Anthony Brindisi says veteran suicides continue at a crisis level. We're losing over 20 veterans a day. 
Brindisi says Congress must help America get a grip on the issue. And this week, Congress passed his bill designed to identify exactly what more the VA needs to help stop the senseless deaths. It takes a look at our suicide prevention coordinators who are really the front line of defense at the VA to assess veterans. Congressman Brindisi says he thinks the VA needs more resources to support suicide prevention coordinators who are overworked and can't manage their workloads. We have to make sure that we have enough of these uh, professionals in the field uh, who are in our VAs who can respond to the needs of our veterans. Sean Skelly, Commissioner of the National Commission on Military, National, and Public Service, says the VA must improve its outreach. 70% of veterans don't access the Veterans Department. Skelly says the military needs to change its culture surrounding asking for help. But even when you're a civilian, after you've gotten out to admit that I need help. Congressman Brindisi says if the Senate will pass his bill, he believes the president will sign it. In Washington, Morgan Wright. The legislation would require the U.S. Controller General to conduct an assessment of the responsibilities, workload, and vacancy rates of the Department of Veterans Affairs suicide prevention coordinators. Veterans of what's known as the Forgotten War were thanked Friday in Lycoming County. Richard Harvey. Oh. Senator Pat Toomey led the Korean Ambassador for Peace Medal Ceremony in Williamsport. He and other government officials gave 70 Korean War veterans a peace medal and a handshake. The Korean War is called the Forgotten War because it took place between two prominent wars, World War II and the Vietnam War. Yesterday's ceremony let Korean War veterans know they are remembered and appreciated. The joy that they got in being recognized, even if it's 60 or 65 years later, is very important. South Korean government sponsored the medals given to the veterans. Veterans were also honored near Wilkesbury yesterday. A Memorial Day ceremony was held at the VA Medical Center. The Pledge of Allegiance was recited and led by former prisoner of war Fred Searles. He also recited the POW Pledge of Allegiance. Congressman Matt Cartwright served as keynote speaker. War dead that we honor on Memorial Day, the people who gave their full measure of devotion for our freedoms uh, all over the world in every conflict our nation has been in. National anthem and a presentation of colors and taps were also a part of Friday's ceremony. We are counting down the Indy 500 and the 103rd running of the race is tomorrow. This year, race fans may notice something different about the iconic yard of bricks at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Nina Crisculo joins us live from Indy to explain. Good morning, Nina. Good morning. It's a tradition here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the winner of any race to kiss the yard of bricks. Now track staff are swapping out three of those bricks to honor the living legends with bronze works of art. We do our job and... We work around everything. Bud Tucker's place is typically behind the scenes. Normally we just do facilities, repair, bleachers, fence, post cables. He's the Indianapolis Motor Speedway welder and an artist. That's that moment where he either survives or he doesn't survive. So when he was asked to create the bronze bricks to honor the three men who have won the Indy 500 four times, he was overwhelmed. Oh, I was so honored to, to, for them to just ask me to, to do this. Um, you know, I was so humbled and grateful. Using bricks from the yard itself. But you can see this brick actually has rubber on it. It's darker on top. Tucker set out to create something timeless. So the name and the dates, will, they'll all be hand carved. And worthy of legends. The first to honor A.J. Foyt was placed one month ago by Tucker himself. That was, that was an honor of a lifetime. And while most will never notice Tucker's handiwork on the bleachers and posts, they'll see and remember this for generations to come. For me as an artist, it is, it is really us leaving our mark on this place while we were here. AJ Foyt's brick is secured and ready to go now for the 103rd running of the Indy 500 tomorrow. The other two bricks, honoring four time Indy 500 winners Rick Mears and Al Unser, will be placed at a later date. At the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, I'm Nina Criscolo. Back to you. Thank you, Nina. There's no shortage of food festivals across our area. 
But a business owner in Lackawanna County has come up with a new idea, and it involves a saucy NEPA staple. Reporter Kelly Cho is the first to dish out the details only on Eyewitness News. You know it's festival season when Jessup Host Company number two kicks off their annual carnival. And northeastern Pennsylvania has its fair share of warm weather events where the focus is on the food. Kilbasi, pierogies, tomatoes, well, you get the idea. But if you ask Giovanni Piccolino, he'll tell you there's something missing. Our area is, is obviously known for pizza shops, I think, and there's a ton of them, so why not a pizza fest? <laughs> Giovanni is the co-owner of Bona Pizza on Lackawanna Avenue in Scranton. He posted his idea on Facebook, and in less than a week, he already had a meeting at Montage Mountain, a possible venue for the pizza fest. Giovanni says it's still in the early planning stages, but it could happen as early as July. 30 something pizza shops under one tent with a bunch of beer. Giovanni told me the festival could turn into a friendly competition between the vendors, especially with the variety of styles that NEPA has to offer. You know, the round, square, you know, Sicilian, there's thicker pizza, you know, there's all different ones. We have the best round. Giovanni says he's ready to stand by that statement, hoping more pizza makers will step up to the challenge this summer. Pepperoni and sweet pepperoni. In Scranton, Kelly Cho, Eyewitness News. If your pizza shop wants to participate in the festival, you can send a message to the Bona Pizza Lackawanna Avenue Facebook page. Now here's Dennis Owens with what's coming up on This Week in Pennsylvania. Coming up on This Week in Pennsylvania, we talk one-on-one -on -one with Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman. Find out what he's learned from his statewide tour on recreational marijuana. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. What, Baron One? No. WIU has been helping. Oh, no, I have to put it on yet. Yeah. No. Oh, I, I'm sorry. You got to have the. the uh, I'm sorry. Janet Wise Children's uh, Hospital duh. in Danville since 1999. This year, we're mixing things up instead of spreading our efforts over the course of a weekend. We will focus on a single day, Monday, June 3rd. And for the first time, both WYOU and WBRE will combine to continue our commitment to helping Children's Miracle Network. Head to our website. Okay, cool. Now, your eyewitness weather forecast. Okay, good Saturday morning, everyone. Thanks for staying with us. Let's go take a look. It's really a nice start to the day. Let's go take a look at Honesdale, Lakeside Elementary School.
Wow, not a, I can't even see any clouds. You had a little bit of fog going for you just a little while ago, but um, you know, that's not looking too bad right now. And again, it's not going to be a really a bad day at all today. We're going to be looking at a mix of sun and clouds as we get through the day. Just have to watch later on this afternoon. A warm front's going to start coming in. And yeah, it's going to bring in warmer temperatures, but it's also going to bring in a chance of some showers late this afternoon. Let's go take a look at temperatures throughout the area. 48 currently at Mount Pocono. Um, Boca Airport, you're at 50. 53 at Williamsport. 56 Ceilings Grove. 53 over there in Allentown. Now, yesterday, what a nice day it was yesterday. Check out the high temperatures over at the airport. 72 for a high, 53 for a low. Now, 72 and 50 are your normal splits, so we're just about right for this time of year. Now, the record high was 88 degrees. That was set back in 1975. Record low of 32 set back in 1963. Sunrise this morning, 536. Sunset this evening is going to be at 824. Okay, let's go take a look now at what the temperatures are going to be for today. We're going to see them climb up into the low to mid 70s throughout most of the area. It's going to be a pretty nice day. Overnight tonight, we're going to drop down into the 60s. And then for tomorrow, we're going to climb back up into the 80s. Let's drop it back down to the 60s and get going into the 80s. There we go. Computer's a little slow this morning. But the 80s tomorrow, that's that warm front that's coming through today. And that's going to just bring in more heat, more humidity. You're going to notice that humidity as you're heading out for tomorrow. All right, now we're going to look at the big picture. We do have, well, I'm going to look at the dew points first. In the mid-60s for tomorrow. So see, right now we're in the 50s. doesn't feel that bad. But once we get into the mid-60s, that's going to be a whole different story with those temperatures in the 80s. Now we're going to take a look at the big picture. And we do see some showers up there in the Great Lakes area. And you kind of see a little bit of a bend here with those showers. That's because this is a flow coming in out of the south and west. That's where all that warm, moist air is hiding. We'll look at all the players that are on the map for today. We have high pressure just off the coast. That's bringing us in that southwesterly flow. Have a cold front out here. That won't be coming through till tomorrow. But this warm front is going to give us a chance of some showers. We'll put the future cast in motion. You see these red streamers. That's that warm, moist air. It's going to make its way towards us as that high gets off the coast. Have a chance of showers, thunderstorms later today. And then we're going to have a chance of showers and thunderstorms as you go through the nighttime hours. And then tomorrow, as the cold front comes through, we're going to have another chance of some showers and thunderstorms. And high pressure builds in. And if you have plans for Monday, that's looking pretty good. But Tuesday, we do have another chance of showers as we do see this cold front slide off to the east. And a warm front takes its place. And we're going to see warm and humid conditions as we go through the balance of next week. Let's go take a look now at what's going to happen over the next seven days. We're going to be looking at 60 or 82 for a high on Sunday. Sky shower, thunderstorm, nice on Monday. And then for the rest of the week, I'm afraid it's a little bit unsettled, Morgan. In the 80s, chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms. Before those thunderstorms come in, you can be ready for it, Mother Nature. Just download the weather app on your cell phone. So not bad today, but we have to watch for later on this afternoon. Not bad. Do you have any plans for the holiday weekend? No, just working, cutting grass, you know, doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'll be relaxing inside that, yeah. you know, rather be somewhere warm. Thanks, Kevin. Well, WYOU has been helping Children's Miracle Network raise money for Guy Singer's Janet Wise Children's Hospital in Danville since 1999. This year, we're mixing things up. Instead of spreading our efforts over the course of a weekend, we will focus on a single day, Monday, June 3rd. And for the first time, both WYOU and WBRE will combine to continue our commitment to helping Children's Miracle Network. Head to our website, pahomepage.com, to learn more. Stay tuned. Eyewitness News continues with sports right after this break. Eyewitness Sports. It's the battle for I-81 as the Scranton Wilkesbury Rail Riders travel north to take on the Syracuse Mets.
Now, Eyewitness Sports. It's the battle for I-81 as the scranton Wilkesbury Rail Riders travel north to take on the Syracuse Mets for a four-game series. We pick it up in the top eight. Riders down three. Ryan McBroom starts the rally with a solo shot to right. The deficit is cut to two. A few batters later, Riders have the bases loaded, and Bravik Valera with some clutch hitting lately. Would you believe it? A grand slam to take a 6-4 lead, and they hang on from there, 6-5 the final. The Iron Pigs at home to host Buffalo. A rough start for their bullpen. Bottom one, Bacon down by five. Lane Adams gets the Iron Pigs going with a solo home run to center. Then in the bottom two, Gift and Gofe with bases loaded. And guess what? He also cranks a grand slam. Game tied. But again, that bullpen hurting the big, and it gives up 10 more runs. Iron Pigs fall 15 to 8. Friday was day one of the state meet in Shippensburg for our high school track and field athletes. In the double-A long jump, Julian Fleming of Southern Columbia recorded a leap of 22 feet, 8.5 inches. That's good enough for the state silver medal. Day two events are starting in just a bit. We'll have much more from Shippensburg later on tonight. Penn State men's lacrosse is looking to make history in Philadelphia today as the Nittany Lions play in their first ever Final Four. Penn State enters championship weekend as the number one overall seed, riding a 13-game win streak. In fact, their only loss this season came in February against Yale, the team they will face in the national semifinal. But head coach Jeff Cambroni says he's telling his guys to keep their emotions in check. It's going to be tough not, not to hold back the emotion. Um, I would imagine it's going to be a, a Penn State friend, friendly crowd from, from what we gather. So it'll be really nice to be to able to play in front of a lot of alums, family and friends. Um, at the same point, this is one of those moments where I think our guys really need to um, just do their task. It's, it's going to be a very task-oriented warm-up and probably not a lot, of, a lot of emotion in our pregame speech. It's going to be more, more tactical and factual. Penn State and Yale face off today at 2.30, following the other semifinal of Virginia and Duke at noon. Next check on sports. Have a great rest of your day. Oh. Hey, uh, Tom? Baby otters. Oh, we can use the otter one. Um, oh, we don't have time. Oh. <laughs> I was making a joke. I got it. Um, hey, Tom, let's go uh, open the maps, please. Hello? No, no, I... Hey, I have to close up the show right now, so I'll be back online in just a minute, but uh, I won't be here for a couple minutes. This is Eyewitness News Weekends. 
Okay, not a bad day today. We're going to be looking at a mix of sun and clouds. It's going to be warm, but not humid. Temperatures coming in the mid 70s, chance of showers and thunderstorms later today. So keep an eye out there late in the day in the sky, just in case if you're on those picnics. And remember, you know, folks, you're going to have a good time this weekend. That's okay, but take a couple of seconds just to think about those people that gave their all for this country, paid the ultimate sacrifice. Right, you that's know, true. That is so important. That's what this holiday is all about, is remembering our fallen soldiers. It is. Thanks for the reminder, Kevin. Okay. Well, thank you guys for watching. Enjoy the start of your Memorial Day weekend holiday. Take care. For today's headlines, weather, and much more, go to pahomepage.com.